The offertory of the Mass begins with the offertory antiphon, which is read from the Missal in the loud voice. All the other prayers of the offertory are said in the quiet voice. Since the priest must perform many actions while saying these prayers, they must either be memorized or read from the altar card. Orens. Procede Domine Prepuntum per signum sancti crucis abomibus in sedis in micorum omnium, ut tibi gratum exhibiamus servitutum receptabere fiat sacrificium nostrum. Alleluia. After he finishes the offertory antiphon, he takes the rear corners of the chalice veil and removes the veil from the chalice. He then folds the chalice veil which he lays on the epistle side of the altar. Or he may hand it to the server and the server can fold the veil. The priest then lays his left hand on the altar, takes the chalice with the right and sets it to the epistle side. He uncovers the chalice and sets the pall aside leaning it against the back of the altar or the altar card. He then takes the patent with the right hand and brings it to the center over the corporal. His left hand meets the patent in the center and holding the patent with both hands at the level of his breast, he lifts his eyes up to the cross and then immediately lowers them. He then begins the prayer, Sushipe Sancte Pater. The patent should be held at the edges with the thumb and forefinger of both hands. The other six fingers should be underneath the patent with the fingertips touching. The priest should keep his eyes fixed on the host for the entire duration of this prayer. When he says the Amen at the end of the prayer, he lowers the patent to a few inches above the corporal and makes the sign of the cross over the place where he will lay the host. He then tilts the patent towards the center and slides the host onto the corporal at the center of the crease nearest him. The left hand is laid on the altar, and the right hand slides the patent halfway underneath the middle of the corporal on the epistle side. He takes the chalice in the left hand, and with the right hand he wipes out the inside with the purificator and goes to the epistle corner. He places the purificator in the thumb of the left hand and drapes it against the side of the chalice holding the chalice in the left hand just below the cup. The priest then takes the wine cruet from the server and pours in a sufficient amount of wine, enough that he can conveniently drink it in one swallow. The server presents the water cruet, which the priest blesses as he begins the prayer, Deus qui humane substantiae. He infuses a few small drops of water into the wine as he says the words, Per huius aquae et vini mysterium. It is customary in many places for the priest to make a slight head bow to the server after returning the cruet in recognition of his service. The priest then takes the purificator with the index finger of the right hand and wipes out any stray drops of water from the inside of the chalice. He then sets the chalice near the corporal with the left hand. With the purificator still in his right hand, he joins his hands and finishes the prayer, making a low head bow at the words, Jesus Christus. The priest then goes to the center, lays the purificator over the exposed part of the paten, with the open folds towards the back and the cross facing himself. He takes the chalice with the right hand and brings it to the center over the corporal where the left hand meets the chalice at the base. He raises the chalice and recites the entire prayer, Oferimus Tibi, with his eyes lifted up to the cross. At the end of the prayer, he lowers the chalice to a few inches above the corporal and makes the sign of the cross over the place where he will lay the chalice. The right hand takes the pall and covers the chalice. Any time the priest covers and uncovers the chalice, the left hand is laid at the base to steady it. The priest then joins his hands and lays them on the altar as he makes a medium bow of the body, and in this position he recites the prayer in Spiritu Humilitatis. Afterwards, he immediately says the prayer, Veni Santificator. 
The Veni Santificator is a short prayer which consists of several different movements. When the priest says the words, Veni Santificator Omnipotens Eterni Deus, he separates, elevates, and rejoins his hands in a small circle, as he did for the Gloria and Creed, only this time he also lifts his eyes up to the cross. At the words, Et Benedic Hoc Sacrificium, he places his left hand on the altar and blesses both the chalice and host together with the right hand. He then joins his hands and says the remainder of the prayer, Tuo Sancto Nomini Preparatum. He then goes to the epistle corner for the lavabo. After the priest blesses the oblata at the Veni Santificator, he goes to the epistle corner for the lavabo. He recites the lavabo psalm as the server pours water over the thumb and forefinger of both hands. The priest dries his hands on the lavabo towel, after which he may bow to the server who departs. He then finishes the psalm facing the altar card with hands joined. At the Gloria Patri, he makes a low head bow. He returns to the center as he says the Sicut Erat in Principio. At the center, he immediately raises his eyes up to the cross and then makes a medium bow of the body with hands joined resting on the altar. In this position, he says the prayer, Sushipe Sancta Trinitas. Although the holy name and the name of Mary and the several saints occur in this prayer, he does not make any head bows since he is already bowed down in a position of reverence. When he finishes the prayer, he immediately separates his hands, placing them flat on the altar, kisses the altar, and then turns around to face the people. He separates and rejoins his hands, as he says in the loud voice, The rest of the prayer is said in the quiet voice as he continues the turn, making a full circle back to face the altar. Note that the Orate Fratres prayer is not on the altar card and must be memorized. Also note that the first two words of this prayer, Orate Fratres, are the only two words of the offertory prayers, which are said in the loud voice. The server responds with the Sushipia. Sushipia Dominus Sacrificium de Manus Tuis Ad Laudum and Glorum Nomine Sui Ad Utilitatum Corpore Nostrum. The priest answers Amen in the quiet voice. He then extends his hands and reads the secret prayer from the Missal. At the conclusion, he joins his hands and, if the holy name is mentioned, he bows his head to the cross. Whichever conclusion is used, the priest will always stop at the word Deus and then turn the page to the preface before saying the Per Omnia Secula Seculorum. He lays his right hand on the altar, turns the page with the left hand to the preface, and then places both hands flat on the altar. Amen. He now begins the preface dialogue in the loud voice. The preface consists of an introductory dialogue followed by the actual preface for the Mass of the day. The preface dialogue always begins with the last line of the conclusion to the secret, which is spoken in the loud voice with the hands laid flat on the altar. At the sursum corda, he raises his hands, keeping them extended. He slowly joins his hands at the words, Gratia segamos Domino Deo Nostro, lifting his eyes to the cross as he says the word Deo, and then making a low head bow. He then separates his hands and keeps them extended as he reads the entire preface in the loud voice. 
Hermia secura securorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Sursum cura. Abemus dominum. Gratis agamus domino Deo nostro. Demium iustum est. Vere dinim iustum est ecum et salutare nos tibis semper rubica gratis agere Domine Sancti Patro omnipotens et enedes. Qui salutam humani generis in lino crucis constituisti, ut unde moras oriebatur, inde vite resurgeret, et qui in lino vincebat in lino coque vinceretur, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Perquem maestatum tuum ladent angeli adorant dominationes, tremunt potestatis, cedi cedarunque virtutis sacriatis serafim, socii exultatione concerebant, cum quibus et nostris voces surimite iubias deplicamo, suplici confessione dicente. The preface is followed by the Sanctus, which introduces the canon. When he begins the Sanctus, he joins his hands and makes a medium bow of the body, but not resting his hands on the altar. It is customary for the server to ring the bells three times at the beginning of the Sanctus. At the Benedictus, the priest straightens and makes the sign of the cross. At the end of the Sanctus, he places his right hand on the altar and turns the page to begin the canon. The canon is the most ancient part of the Mass and is said with the greatest solemnity. All the prayers of the canon are read from the Missal and said in the quiet voice. The first prayer of the canon is the Te Igitur. Before the priest begins the Te Igitur, he first joins his hands, separates, elevates, and rejoins them as he lifts his eyes to the cross, then bows profoundly over the altar and rests his joined hands on the edge. This entire gesture is made in silence. Only once he is bowed down does he begin the Te Igitur. The first part is said in a profound bow with hands joined on the altar. After the phrase supplices rogamus ac petimus, the priest separates his hands and kisses the altar. He then stands erect and joins his hands while he says utia cepta habeas et benedicas. He then places his left hand on the altar and blesses both host and chalice three times as he says, Hec dona, hec munera, hec sancta sacrificia ilibata. He then extends his hands before the breast and continues with the remainder of the prayer. He makes a slight head bow towards the missal when he mentions the name of the Pope. When the name of the bishop is mentioned, it should always be the name of the local ordinary of the place where the priest is saying Mass. The next prayer of the canon is the memento for the living. At the words, Memento Domine Famalorum Famalorum Que Tuarum, the priest joins his hands slowly as he elevates them just below his face and bows his head slightly. He does not pronounce the phrase N at N, he simply remembers those for whom he wishes to pray, either mentally or by mentioning them in the quiet voice. He spends a few moments in remembrance and then separates his hands and holds them extended for the remainder of the prayer. The next prayer is the Communicantes. The communicantes will vary depending on the season of the year. There is a special form used for Christmas, Epiphany, Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost. These special forms will usually be marked in the Missal on a separate page in the canon. For the remainder of the year, the regular form is used and never changes. The communicantes is said with hands extended. The priest makes a medium head bow to the Missal at the name of Our Lady, and then a low head bow to the cross at the name of Our Lord. If the altar Missal being used is an edition that was printed prior to 1962, the name of St. Joseph must be added to the list of the saints. The formula which must be added is et Beati Iosif eusdem virginis sponsi, which should be inserted in between the said and the et of the phrase 
sedet beatorum apostolorum. The amended text should read, Sed et beati Joseph eustem virginis sponsi et beatorum apostolorum. If it is the feast day of any of the saints listed, the priest makes a slight head bow to the missal at the mention of that particular saint. At the conclusion of the communicantes, the priest joins his hands. The next prayer is the Hank Igitur. The priest extends his joined hands over the oblata and keeps them there for the duration of the entire prayer. It is customary for the server to ring the bell as the priest extends his hands. The hands should be extended so that the index fingers touch and the fingertips at the middle of the pall, the palms over the host. Note that there is also a special form of the Hank Igitur for the octaves of Easter and Pentecost, which will be marked in the Missal. At the conclusion of the Hank Igitur, the priest folds his hands and joins them again at the breast. The next prayer is the Quam Oblationum, which consists of five signs of the cross made over the oblata. The first part of the prayer is said with hands joined. The priest then makes five signs of the cross, three over both the chalice and host, one over just the host, and one over just the chalice. The third sign of the cross should be made more slowly so that the priest may say all the words ratam rationabilem acceptabilem quae facere digneris as he makes the sign of the cross. He concludes the prayer by joining his hands and making a low head bow at the holy name. The prayer immediately before the consecration is the Quipridie. As the priest begins the Quipridie, he lightly wipes the tips of his thumb and forefinger of both hands near the outside edges of the corporal. He then takes the host in both hands at the words Acepit Panem, holding it upright with the thumb and forefinger of both hands, his other fingers extended and touching at the fingertips. His hands should not rest on the corporal. At the words, Elevatis oculis in celum, he raises his eyes to the cross and then makes a low head bow as he says, Tibi gratias agens. As he says, Benedixit, he makes the sign of the cross over the host with his right hand, keeping all his fingers extended, including the thumb and forefinger. He then bows profoundly over the altar, resting his forearms against the front edge of the altar, but keeping his hands above the corporal. He then says the words of consecration. The rubrics direct that the words of consecration be pronounced attentively with the greatest recollection and devotion, distinctly so that the words are clearly enunciated and pronounced a little more slowly than the other words of the canon but still continuously, without any pauses between words. Reverently, without any exaggerated enunciation or mannerisms, and in the quiet voice, maintaining the voce secreta, so that apart from any external noise, the priest can still hear himself. After the priest has pronounced the words of consecration, he stands erect and moves his hands to rest at the edge of the corporal. He genuflects, looking intently at the sacred host as he does so. He then rises and elevates the host above his head, but keeping it in a straight line above the corporal. He should keep his eyes intently fixed upon the host throughout the elevations without unduly prolonging the duration of the elevation. It should be a slow but continuous movement. He lowers the host and sets it on the corporal in the center, 
and then with both hands resting inside the corporal, the priest again genuflects. From this moment forward, until his fingers are purified at the ablutions, the priest does not disjoin his thumb and forefinger except to touch the sacred host. Every time he must place his hands on the altar, he must set them inside the corporal. He then immediately proceeds to the consecration of the precious blood. He uncovers the chalice and rubs his thumb and forefingers over the cup to dislodge any particles of the sacred host as he begins the prayer similimodo. He takes the chalice at the stem with both hands, right over left, making sure to keep custody of the thumb and forefinger of each hand. He elevates the chalice slightly above the corporal as he says, Acipiens et hunc preclarum calicem. He sets the chalice down and makes a low head bow at the words, Tibi gratias agens. Keeping the left hand on the stem, he makes the sign of the cross over the chalice with the right hand as he says, Benedixit. Then takes the chalice with both hands lifts it off the corporal, and moves the left hand underneath the base, while keeping the right hand at the stem just beneath the cup as he finishes the prayer. He then bows profoundly over the altar, with his forearms resting on the edge, and says the words of consecration. They should be pronounced in the same manner as the words of consecration for the host. Attentively, distinctly, continuously, reverently, and quietly. Since these are the most important words of the Mass, it is best if the priest always reads them from the altar card, even though he may have them memorized. After pronouncing the words of consecration, the priest sets down the chalice, rests his hands on the corporal, and genuflects. As he genuflects, he says the words, Hec quotius cumque feceritis in me memoriam facietis. He rises, takes the chalice with the right hand beneath the cup and the left hand at the base, and elevates it in a straight line above the corporal, offering it to God as he shows it to the people. He keeps his eyes intent upon the chalice throughout the elevation. He then lowers the chalice, sets it on the corporal, takes the paw with the right hand, and covers the chalice, keeping the left hand at the base to steady it. He then genuflects. Most altar missiles will have a page turn at this point. Notice that when turning the pages after the consecration, the right hand is placed on the corporal, and the left hand turns the page using only the second and third fingers. The priest then extends his hands and continues with the remainder of the canon. In the second half of the canon, the first prayer is the unde et memores. The first part is said with hands extended. At the phrase, de tuis donis actatis, the priest joins his hands momentarily, places his left hand on the corporal, and makes the sign of the cross three times over both the host and the chalice together, as he says, hostiam puram, hostiam sanctam, hostiam immaculatam then once over the host, as he says, Panam Sanctum Vitae Eterne, and once over the chalice, at Calicem Salutis Perpetue. He then immediately extends his hands for the next prayer, Supraque Propitio, which he says, keeping the hands extended. The next prayer is the Supplices Te Rogamus. Before beginning this prayer, the priest joins his hands and bows profoundly, resting his joined hands on the edge of the altar. Note that even though it is after the consecration, the priest still rests his hands on the edge of the altar, but remembering to keep custody of the thumb and forefinger. In this position, he says the first part of the prayer up to the word, quote, quote. At quote, quote, he separates his hands and kisses the altar, making sure to place his hands inside the corporal. 
He then straightens and joins his hands momentarily as he says, Ex hac altaris participatione sacrosanctum filii tui. He lays his left hand on the corporal and makes the sign of the cross once over the host as he says corpus, and once over the chalice as he says et sanguinam sumserimus. He then immediately makes the sign of the cross on himself as he says omni benedictione celesti et gratia repleamur. Note that his left hand is placed against the breast such that he keeps custody of his thumb and forefinger. The right hand touches forehead, breast, and shoulders only with the tips of the three extended fingers. He then joins his hands and says the conclusion of the prayer, Pereundum Christum Dominum Nostrum. He then makes the remembrance for the dead. He says the entire first part of the prayer from the word memento through to the words in somnopacis without any pauses. While he is saying these words, he slowly extends his hands straight across to the width of his shoulders and then immediately joins and elevates them, raising them to the level of the face and bowing his head slightly. He then pauses and makes his remembrance while looking intently at the sacred host. He does not say the phrase n et n, but waits until after he has said in somnopacis before making the remembrance. As with the memento for the living, he may remember those for whom he wishes to pray either mentally or by mentioning their names in the quiet voice. He then lifts his head, lowers and extends his hands, and continues with ipsis domine. At the phrase, Pereundum Christum Dominum Nostrum, he joins his hands and makes a low head bow to the sacred host. This is the only time when the priest bows his head at a short conclusion which does not contain the holy name. The first three words of the next prayer, Nobis Quoque Peccatoribus, are the only three words of the canon which are spoken in the loud voice. The priest lays his left hand on the corporal and strikes his breast with the right hand as he says in the loud voice, He then immediately extends his hands and continues in the quiet voice. If the saint whose feast is being celebrated is mentioned in the list of saints, the priest makes a slight head bow to the missal when that name is mentioned. At the conclusion of the prayer, he joins his hands. The final part of the canon is the great doxology. The perquem hec omnia begins with hands joined. The priest then lays the left hand on the corporal and makes the sign of the cross three times over both the host and the chalice as he says, Sanctificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestas nobis. He then places his left hand at the base of the chalice, uncovers it with the right hand, and genuflects. He takes the host in his right hand holding it at the edge. He then takes the chalice at the stem with the left hand and makes the sign of the cross over the chalice with the host three times as he says, per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso. Note that each sign of the cross is made horizontally from lip to lip of the chalice, making sure not to touch the chalice with the host. He then makes two signs of the cross horizontally from the lip of the chalice to himself making sure not to go beyond the edge of the corporal. As he makes these signs of the cross, he says, Es tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in Unitate Spiritus Sancti. He then holds the host over the chalice and elevates both a few inches off the corporal as he says the words, Omnis Honor et Gloria. He then immediately sets the chalice down, keeping his left hand on the base and lays the host on the corporal in the center. He purifies his thumb and forefingers over the chalice, covers the chalice with the right hand, and genuflex. With both hands still resting on the corporal, he then says in the loud voice, Per omnia secura seculorum. Amen. Oremus. Precepis salutaris.